What up, players? It's Well Boss Tay up in this mod. Today we're taking a look at the Empire Army Archers Kit. You can make archers or huntsmen out of these, and each of them have different applications in your Empire Army. They look great though, they're um, very cheap compared to the gold swords or the great swords. They're still a little bit pricey, especially if you don't plan on using them, but they could be good to take care of chaff and hunt war machines and, and, and do some stuff in your army. So definitely they've got their uses and they're not going to be a total waste and they will be fun to collect and paint. I like how they've got their state trooper uniforms underneath these leather coats that they wear, it looks like, to keep themselves uh, camouflaged or at least hidden in the woods while they're moving around. Um, where obviously a bright red and white uniform would kind of go amiss and be seen very quickly. So I want to show you first of all the instructions are really cool because they're they're different than than many other kits. They, it looks like they're trying to do something with it where they show you the sprue on the paper, the actual sprue. That's not usually what you see, and they kind of group together the arms that go together. So you've got the, the arms with the bows and the bow itself. Then you've got instructions on how to put them together. Pretty simple. For this one guy, you've got two pairs of legs, one torso, and you attach the arms and the head. But most of them, the torsos, come already attached to the legs, pre-posed, which is nice. And they're a lot different than the state trooper slash handgunner crossbowman bodies where they all the poses are kind of the same. Some of these have their legs spread apart and are, are braced on the ground. Some of them are a little bit closer together. Some of them are upright, some of them are hunched over. And it, it's pretty cool. I think it makes a, a nice change. And it also definitely makes them look like a very versatile and kind of ad hoc unit, kind of hastily thrown together, all doing their own different thing, you see, instead of all uniformly posed, which is what a lot of the rest of the Empire Army looks like. Very uniform ranks, all aiming their weapons and shields in a certain way. So it's, it's nice that they, that they look so different. So let's take a look at the sprues themselves. You've got two sprues here, and a lot of the things are kind of similar. Arrows, notched, hands, holding bows, bodies. So different options for hands all paired together so you know which hand goes with which arm. They're all kind of the same, grouped together again. Just really nice. Choice of which legs you want. Do you want a guy kneeling or do you want a guy running? <laughs> this poor orc lying on the ground with the arrow stuck in his belly. That's gonna be awesome. And you're gonna get a wealth of heads. Three, six, nine, ten. You've got ten right there. Plus extra bits. Looks like you're gonna have swords sheathed in their in their scabbards. Loose bows, which I've never seen before, but that might be cool. You could have one slung on on one of their backs or something. So that's interesting. I'm glad they included that in the kit. Here you've got bunches of arrows, some stuck into the ground. And look, even more heads. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. You get nearly 20, no 20, yeah. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you get more than twice, or, or you get twice the amount, more than you need. Twice the amount of heads than you need and just great to be putting into your bits box. Especially because these are archers. You've got some more swords, sheets, free arrows. So because they're archers, they're huntsmen, they're men of the woods, these heads are gonna be a little bit more rural. You could add them to your state troop bodies to make them look a little bit more backwoodsy. And I, I think it would be pretty cool. Dagger in a pouch, or and a pouch rather. You've got sword hands here. So if you don't want all your guys to be holding bows and arrows, notching their arrows, and or, or looking like they just fired arrows. You could have them armed with weapons, and that would be pretty cool too. Hand weapons. Nice variety. My, my coolest bit, which you might have seen, but we're going back to take a look at now, because it's, it's just so 
fun is this pheasant with a arrow right through it. So this guy just caught his dinner. Uh, let's take a look at, now at the bodies, which we didn't really. We got some guys with... I, this looks like monster slashes. Like a, like a chimera or some dragon or something like slashed through this guy's leather jacket and he's still on his feet, still fighting. I, th <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Most of them have a very nice High quality plastic, as always, Games Workshop, but really cool, detailed looking torsos. Some of them have their, their coats hanging open, so you could paint the uniform underneath as if they were state troopers. Very, very cool. You've, you've got some bits in the militia kit, for those of you who still have that, or have that um, in their, you know, in their collection. You can make huntsmen and archers out of, but uh, they will not look nearly as cool as these or as clean, so I am going to put them together now. We'll see what kind of bits we get left over and uh, how we can make best use of that. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, and uh, stick with it! So here we go, I'm using the back of my hobby knife, first of all, to clean up all of these mold lines. And the great thing about this kit was the mold lines were not that bad just alongside the stockings on the legs and down the sides of the coats mostly and it could be just that I haven't seen all of them and when I primer them it's, it's always when you spray prime and undercoat a model that's when you really see them I think because there's a little bit of a shine the, the, the plastic is kind of shiny so you you don't really get to see where exactly all of the mold lines are but hey you know that's okay for now it's just you know, when you first clip the models out, you just want to get them glued together. Mold lines kind of become a, a second priority. So here I'm using Model Master's plastic cement, like always. I love that it, uh, it, it really creates a really strong, solid bond with the models. And um, once you let it dry for a little while, it's, it's really, really good. And it doesn't come apart later, like if you were to super glue plastic pieces together and uh, in, in case you didn't know it's because model Mo masters plastic cement most plastic cement create a chemical reaction where it kind of melts the plastic and uh, when you do two pieces of plastic and stick them together like that it melts the pieces of plastic together and then uh, they connect to each other and then when the when it all dries it's kind of rehardens and reshapes itself and creates a f stronger bond than it was before so these arms, um, because they've got the arrows notched into the bows, are a little bit more tricky and wonky to, to get lined up just right. There's my little pheasant guy. So uh, you just want to make sure that when you're dry fitting them and holding them in place that you get them at the angle you want them to be. Double check that you dry fit your pieces first because you don't want to have a bow arm that's aiming the bow out in front and then your arrow arm is just not matched up correctly. Like this guy right here, the one you saw me just put down there has, has a bow held out to the left and then a sword raised up to the right because the bow arm was supposed to be meant for uh, an arrow to be fired and uh, it turns out that it didn't end up that way when I, when I matched the pieces together. So this part at the end is where the uh, personalization really comes in. As you can see I matched up in front of all the models the extra bits that I was going to use with them. So some of them got weapons, quivers, a lot of pouches, and uh, again you want to clean all the mold lines as, as much as you can, get all that flashed out as much as you can now before, before the paint goes on. The more work you put in now at this point when you're just constructing them, the less you have to go back when you're priming your models. Uh, yeah, so it's a lot of fun, I think, to find which piece exactly goes where. It's kind of like a Tetris game or putting a puzzle together, figuring out which size pouch looks best on which model, and um, just matching everything correctly so that nothing looks too busy and uh, nothing looks too sparse. I know a lot of people that don't like to, to put on those extra pieces and find them really fiddly, but uh, personally, I, I, I think it adds a lot of character, and it's... A nice little touch to make your models stand out, make them look a little bit more bulky.
when you put on heads, the finding the right head with the right expression to match your model's pose and giving it the right aiming it the right direction is super important, I find. Like that guy holding up the pheasant head is I kinda aimed him to look at him, so that's one of my favorite parts, putting the heads on at the end. Alright players, so I just finished building up my 10 archers here and these are the leftover bits. First, these are the arms that I didn't use that I thought I would, but I ended up not. I've got a, one pair of arms there, then a bunch of left arms because I couldn't, or right arms rather, the ones that hold the arrows because I couldn't figure out which ones I wanted to use. I've also got uh, two of these arrow bunches that go into the bases. So. Now let's look at what's left on the sprue. This is the real measure of where, where a, a kit, how much worth is left in it. Some more arrow bow arms. Some more bow arms. So you can definitely make extra bowmen if you have uh, state trooper bodies that you don't care to have. Like say you, you have enough halberdiers or you have enough um, crossbowmen, you have enough arms here to make a whole lot more huntsmen and archers. Plus, like I said, you've got 10 extra heads, which I think is just really fantastic. It's so much more value for your, for your, you know, for your dollar. Extra sword arm, sword arm, sword arm. The tricky thing about these, some more heads here and a bunch of arrows arrows, swords, and free arrows, which I decided not to use. The tricky thing about these is that the sleeves are all different. That's the one thing when I was trying to match these arms up, is that some of them have sleeves that go all the way down and belt at the cuff. Some of them have these kind of like forearm padded gauntlet things and then a sleeve. Some of them have, like this, a sleeve of their coat and then the ruffled uniform underneath that shows their it shows their province's colors. So you can't really mix and match too much because it's gonna be weird if the left arm that's holding a bow, say, comes all the way down to the wrist and then the right arm that's holding a sword has a big poofy sleeve sticking out. You should try to match them as much as possible. So now let me take you to the, uh, through the 10 guys and what I was thinking when I was building them. Here's the first one. The arm is already out at an angle, which the right arm should have been holding an arrow, notching an arrow towards, but I decided that the only arrow arms I wanted to use if they're pulling back or aiming are ones that already have an arrow on it. So this one I had to find a sleeve that has the uniform poofy sleeve underneath. And so that's the one I was able to find. So I'm just making like he's he's indicating forward with this arm as he's running forward with his sword. Here's a guy that's bent over running through the forest trying to get in a, a low jab with his sword, so I decided to give him a face with a screaming mouth. Unfortunately, because of the low level of the model, the low posture, there's no real way to angle the head to look up unless you're, unless you actually pick up the, the model, because if you're looking at the model straight on, let me get a little bit more light. If you're looking at the model straight on, you don't really see his expression. It's only when you pick him up and you kind of turn it down that you can see, oh, what kind of expression he's making. Here's one. This is my, this was my favorite close combat arm. He's holding the, the knife upside down in a stabbing uh, pose. And again, he's got a sleeve over the uniform. I also decided to use all of the quivers and pouches that I could. He's also got an eye patch, which is pretty cool. Here's the gentleman who shot the pheasant. Love this model so much. Like I said, it is my favorite, this little bit. And I tried to make it so he's looking up at the pheasant like he's like he's admiring it or talking to it. He's talking down at him. Why don't you shoot me? Because he was hungry. Here's one who's, I think this is the best of all the models that I made. He's it's got the coolest, very, very calm, very in control face, like he's really lining up the shot and and aiming it. And like I said, I'm try to use any 
any of the hands where they're they've got the arrows like they're actually not knocking notching an arrow sorry to the bow and so I, I think overall this is the best model that I was able to put together in this unit I still got a little bit of flash on this bow let me just clean this up really quick but yeah as you can see the the variety of skull of, of poses you can get because of the the sculpts, the way that they've been sculpted. You've got some action ones, you've got some guys kind of just standing there, and you've got some guys kind of sneaking around. I'm trying to make like this guy is sneaking around to get in a cheap blow, uh, like he's circling around his enemy while his mates keep him busy in the front. Or like he's just sneaking up on his, on his, whatever he's hunting. Here's a guy who's reaching for one of the arrows that he's placed next to him. He doesn't have a quiver. He's got his sword belted on his waist. There's another gentleman with his arrow notched, ready to let fly. The pouches were easy to, to, to glue on because they have all been sculpted with a little bit of a a little bit of a hollow on the backside. So they're meant to put the glue in and just stick it on. Some sometimes with the older bits. The pouches are almost flat, which makes it really, really hard, and they don't look very realistic when you glue them on. These look really nice. There's my second favorite guy. He's kneeling. He's got his arrow notched, and he's screaming. Young, impetuous archer guy there. And last but not least is the unit commander. He's pointing. He's got his uniform. Um, clearly showing underneath his leather jacket. He's got his bow slung over his shoulder, he's got his sword ready to jump into combat, and he's got a big sergeant-like feather. I decided I, I didn't want all my guys to have feathers or even, you know, more than him, just because the feathers are so obvious, and these guys are supposed to be the kind of stealthy ones, so try not to make them too gaudy and outrageous. But for uh, for a kit, the ease of putting them together, I give an A+. They're, they're really easy to, to clean. The mold lines were where you would expect them to be. And as I said in the, in the, the um, time lapse, just use the back end of your hobby knife to scrape those mold lines and then that way you don't gouge into the plastic. Some of the things that are hard to, or not hard, but a little bit tricky are when you've got these arrow arms that you're trying to glue on at the same time. You want to either dry fit them or glue on the bow arm first at the angle that you know you want it to be. Then glue on the head so that you can see where the focus is supposed to be and then take this arm that's holding the arrow and glue that on last once these two are dried because that will give you the uh, set up the foundation. It's kind of like you're building the sculpture piece by piece. You've got the focus, you've, you know where the model's looking at and uh, it just makes it a whole lot easier. But beautiful kit to put together, the finished product, the result, they all look individual and different. The price isn't so bad that it, it's definitely not as bad as a core infantry unit or a, or a great swords unit. So for the amount of bits you get, the value, the, the conversion opportunities you get with the extra heads and all of the extra weapons and bits and arrows and stuff. And of course, I didn't show you this guy till now, but here's, here's our orc. He does not get a base, they did not come with an 11th base, he's actually, he would be on a 25mm base, but um, I'm probably going to put him onto something else, maybe a scenery piece or on a chariot base with something else for a, a, an orc and goblin unit. And uh, I didn't want to use the head that came in the box that it came with because it's that standard orc baring his teeth. I kind of want to use an orc head where he's just like got his jaw unhinged and he's just screaming, bellowing his head out off. I think that would be much more funnier. But it came in one piece, you take the arrow and then you just glue it in and stick it into the depression right there. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Please leave me any comments. If you are an Empire General and you have used these guys before, let me know how they work for you. Um, what kind of tips and tactics would you would you give to an aspiring Empire Commander who's thinking about using these guys? Are they worth it or should I just throw them into a militia unit where all the weapons just don't really matter so much um, or should they be run as huntsmen slash archers and what are some good tips and tactics that might help other empire players out there 
Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. I'm definitely going to use one of these guys for my Sterland Archer um, paint scheme, color scheme, tutorial that's coming up. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.